And now this cow I'm going to talk about here a little bit. This is the, 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 the one that started this L family. Um, a cow that kind of put us on the map, per se. Um, her mother was a Glen Drummond delegate. Old Canadian bull, powerful, big cattle. Maybe could be a little wetter, as they would say. That cow was very good. Massive frame, width, length. She made a record of 41,000 for us, way back in the 70s. And uh, we didn't have any trouble getting milk out of that cow. We bred her to, to broker and got this cow. And I just want to tell a little bit of the story about this cow and how the cow business can be ironic and incredible sometimes. This is one of those things that happened that <coughs> you couldn't, <coughs> excuse me, you could make a movie out of. We got her as a calf. She was born in September, and we showed at our local Troy Fair. Now that's a, that's a, that's a powerful county show. Some of the national judges that have judged there said you won't find a better county show anywhere. And we're very proud of that in our county. She took first place as a fall calf. I hope I can keep you with me here through this story because it's really good. And was reserve junior champion. The judge that day was Chris Hill. Probably some of you have heard of him before. Well, took her home. I think she got, then we went to two different district shows. She got beat in both of them. I mean, she was second, third, fourth, doesn't matter. We, we bred her and we put her outside for the winter. We didn't have that heifer barn at the time. So she's a bred heifer outside with another 40 heifers in the mud up on the hillside. We don't have that sandy soil you folks do here. They're, they're, where they eat is in the mud. And uh, the next spring, she's a bred heifer. Chris Hill shows up and he wants to buy her, or wants to take her and put her in the show sale down in Maryland. He remembered her. And we're like, you know, we didn't think we had anything special. We didn't even think about it. No, we want to keep her and develop her and see what happens. A little while later, him and Mike Heath show up, and they want to buy her. And so we're like, you know, all right, we put a price on her, a really good price for what we thought we had at the time, but, and, and they took her. They took her home. They clipped her up. They sent a video out to Illinois to Butler and Buckley and those guys, and they more than doubled their money within a few weeks. And that's great. You know, and we're, we're doing our work at home. We're, we're farmers. We're breeders. We're not following the show circuit. And then all of a sudden we start to hear some things. And she won the Illinois State Show. Well, that's good. Well, great. We're happy for them. And now I'm going to stop the story right now. And I'm going to back up a little bit. I'm going to tell you something that happened. In March of that year, before we sold her, our Bradford County Holstein Club went on a tour up to Canada. And we went to the Ontario Discovery Spring Show in Ontario. Powerful show, you can imagine. And I was following, man, looking in the world, you know, and there was this, there's this heifer that stood out to me the year before. Like I said, I don't follow the show cattle a lot, but I did this one for some reason. She was a Starbuck daughter. Starbuck was past his heyday. For me, Starbuck Renee was her name. She was a fall calf the year before, and she was unanimous, all-American, all-Canadian, never lost a show all year. And she was a Starbuck daughter. And that's why it stood out to me, because the, probably the only Starbuck daughter that was at the top at that time, his heyday was already gone. And so I followed her, just kept my eye on that heifer the year before, and then I'm up there at that Ontario Spring Show. I didn't think about who was there. But we're standing there right along the ring, me and my buddies, and here come this fall yearling around the ring for May Starbuck Renee. I mean, just unbelievable yearling. Well, she's junior champion that day. And just, I thought, holy smokes, that's that heifer that I noticed the year before in the world. And that was it. We went home. Okay, we went home. Did our work. Now, she's out there in Illinois, won that show. She's a fall yearling. I think you know where I'm headed. Anyway, Madison's coming up that year. Well, they take her to Madison. Holy smoke, she must have really developed since she left our place. And they have her at Madison. So we thought, we ought to go out and see her. We ought to go out to Madison and, and see her show. You know, we, so we get our chores done, we line up our help, and we're on our way to Madison, my wife and I. And we get out there, we walk in the tent where she is, housed with Chris Hill and his entourage of people, 
And what's the first words out of Chris Hill's mouth? I think we can beat Renee. Now, how ironic is that? You know, that this heifer I've been following is all of a sudden, he says, I, and I'm like, come on! Are you crazy? You know, if, if we're in the top half, I'd be happy. See, I, did, I didn't know what I had. I, had I, didn't, I hadn't seen her develop. And lo and behold, we're watching the Madison fall yearling class. And all of a sudden, they sort two heifers to the top, Renee and Lucy. Renee's first and Lucy's second. And at the last second, he switched them. You don't think I got goosebumps talking about it right now? I mean, think about it. What if I was, if, when I was standing along the ring in March in, in Ontario and watching Renee walk by, if somebody would have tapped me on the shoulder and said, Dean, you have a heifer in the mud at home that's going to beat her in Madison this year. Isn't that a heck of a story? I mean, it's just unbelievable. I, I, I'll never have one in my life that'll top it. And she did. She won that day at Madison. Um, she got sold up in Canada. Eckstein's had her. Bob Fitzsimmons was working for Carousel at the time. He was up in Canada. That's the way I heard the story. He wasn't there to look at Lucy, but he was in the area and he knew she was there, so he went into Eckstein's to buy her, or to, to see her. And he called back to Carousel, to Harold Bader, and he said, we got to have this, this Lucy cow. They already had Rosie. She's... She was bred 10 miles from where we live. And um, lo and behold, they made the arrangement and they bought her. And uh, as a three year old, she was. Well, I've been doing hitting the button here. She ended up winning and was intermediate champion at Madison. Um, my dad was there. And he was, he had some age on him at this point. Mom and dad went out to see her sh showing. And on his birthday, he was uh, intermediate champion. Nice. And so anyway, then Carousel had a dispersal coming up a few years later. In the meantime, we'd been out to see her. They had her, they had her in their first box stall in their new facility where their flush cows were. She was in their very first Carousel. And they did a Holstein International did an article when their upcoming sale was at Carousel. And Bob Fitzsimmons. Made a comment in there, maybe the nicest compliment we ever got. He said, of all the great cows we've had at Carousel, and he named them off. Broker Mandy, Renee DeRanger, Blacks, Bugs Black Star Buffy. He says, the greatest brood cow of them all was Lucy. And Dad went out to the sale. Him and Dick Mellinger went out to the sale. And he brought back some embryos. He brought back that cow right there, the daughter of Lucy and a Gibson heifer that ended up being an excellent cow for us. And he went out there and, and brought them back. And from that purchase, going to Carousel and bringing back that cow family, we have all these other animals down these bulls. So that's a little bit about how Dad chased out there after that genetics because we believed in it, because we knew how powerful it was. And, and then we get, <laughs> we get this cow home. And she's our, this cow here, and she's already bred to town. Bob Fitzsimmons made that mating. And we got this town Lynn cow. I bred her to Dundee and got lovely. And it just keeps, just keeps going. It's a powerful thing, and, and my job is to capitalize on it and make matings for bulls. And would I like to have the whole herd go back to that one cow? Yeah, that'd be neat. That'd be something different, but that's probably not realistic. I know a herd that did that one time. And it kind of put him on the map because it was so unique. 